color photography was employed with great success over these locations in Cuba. Here is a color view of the Soviet SAM site at La Coloma, Cuba. Again, the characteristic road pattern and the six centrally positioned firing positions, I should say, six firing positions focused on a centrally located guidance area. Notice, if you will, that three missiles are uncovered. One here, another here, and another here. In addition to the deployment of surface-to-air missiles, the Soviets also deployed in Cuba the Fishbed, the MiG-21 fighter interceptor. This particular aircraft is equipped with air-to-air -air missiles, can reach altitudes of 40,000 feet and speeds of 1,000 knots. On 10 November, low-altitude photography provided us something interesting and new concerning the Soviet MiG-21 aircraft in Cuba. We found, interestingly enough, near these aircraft on this, these date, air, on this date, air-to-air -air missiles. Here's the AA-2, a Soviet air-to-air -air missile with a range of six nautical miles. It's positioned near the delta-winged or configured MiG-21 aircraft. The Soviet crew is placing a launcher beneath the, the wing, a launcher rack. Key beach areas in Cuba are defended by coast defense cruise missile. These missiles uh, are aerodynamically configured and have a range of 40 nautical miles. We have four confirmed operational sites. One at Bonas in eastern Cuba, one at Seguinea on the Isle of Pines, and two confirmed sites in the vicinity of Havana, Santa Cruz del Norte and Campo Libertad. An excellent photograph of one of the typical operational sites is shown here at Seguinea on the Isle of Pines. Here, the Soviets took the highest promontory on the island. They dozed it down. Then they emplaced two missile firing positions, each of which were earth revetted, one here and one here. Inside was the 34-foot-long rail launcher, uncovered at this location and canvas covered at this location. The guided missile patrol boat, nicknamed the Comor, was deployed at two naval bases in Cuba. One, Mariel in the west, and where 12 or eight of these uh, boats were identified, and Bonas in the east, where four of the boats have been identified. This is an enlargement of that pier area from our uh, low altitude photography. The boats, the Comar boats, measure 83 feet in length. They weigh 66 ton, and on the aft end, they have two missile firing canisters. These canisters measure 20 feet in length. The missile fired from this boat is estimated to have a range of 10 to 15 nautical miles. It's primarily a mobile anti-shipping missile launching platform. Soviet ground forces were deployed in Cuba sometime after mid-September. The first photographic evidence we had of these ground force locations came on 17 October. They are deployed at four major and several smaller locations. Each of these locations is characterized by a highly mobile armored task group. They include assault guns, tanks, tactical rocket launchers, anti-tank weapons, and a motorized infantry battalion. In addition, at these four locations, we find the modern Soviet T-54 tank with 100 millimeter gun. 35 to 40 of these tanks are identified at each of the locations. Here are the T-54 tanks under canvas cover, and here are the T-54 tanks uncovered with hatches open, Soviet crews working on them, and tubes being rotated. More modern Soviet ground force fighting equipment was also observed. Here is the tactical rocket launcher, the Frog, in a Soviet motor pool or garrison area at Remedios. Here's the refire missile on a missile transporter, along with your associated guidance equipment. Notice, if you will, on this graphic, other more modern Soviet equipment, including five 130 millimeter rocket launchers here, the standard SU-100 assault gun, and other T-54 tanks under canvas cover. In addition to carefully monitoring the remaining defensive forces on the island of Cuba, United States reconnaissance aircraft have effected continuous surveillance of former Soviet offensive missile and bomber bases. 